last week, we introduced you to Victoria and give you a walk through all she had to offer. This week, we harvest a mast. So I'm standing underneath a Norway spruce that my great grandfather planted, I don't know, 80 something years ago. And he planted a bunch of them around here. There's a whole line in front of the house. And it just so happens that we need spruce for a mast. And this tree is plenty big to get a mast out of. So we're gonna harvest it and let it dry over the next year or so. And hopefully end up getting a solid one piece grown mast out of it. And if it doesn't look quite ideal for that, then we'll cut it shorter, mill it, and glue our mast out of it. But this tree is really starting to crack the driveway, and picking up all the cones and the needles is a pain in the butt. So I have my mom's permission and my grandparents' permission to cut it down. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so it's, I don't know, my great-grandfather planted it, so that would be my grandma's father. And I remember him when I was a kid. He died when I was a teenager. So yeah, it's kind of cool to be cutting down a tree that he planted to put in our sailboat and take around the world. And I'm sure he never in a million years would have thought that that was what would happen when he planted these trees. But I'm sure he would be tickled pink to know that that's what's happening. <laughs> this would be right up his alley. We start this operation off by putting our climbing skills to the test. By fixing a rope from the top of the tree to the bottom of it, it gives us a relatively quick way up and down to be able to work. But first, you have to reach the top. From there, we cleaned up some of the larger branches so that Steve could give me a quick tutorial for what's next. So for this project, we've quit jobs, got jobs, quit jobs again. It's been kind of a roller coaster. But so far, it's worked really well in our favor. By leaving the gym, I got to cash in my meager 401k, but when Victoria came up for sale, that gave us the, the slush fund we needed just to go buy her, which we wouldn't have had otherwise. And after quitting the gym, one of my our family friends needed some help on his tree crew, and that worked out pretty perfectly, because I could go work for him, I could have very flexible hours to work on the boat when we need it, and it allowed Alex to quit his job at the coffee shop and spend more time making videos, which has been huge. Maybe you've noticed the quality's gotten a little better. That's because of that. And one of the huge perks right now working for Tom is that one, it's flexible, but two, I get to use things like this, which is amazing. So taking down this tree and getting all the material out of here would have been a multi-day affair. But since Tom's kind enough to let me borrow his dump truck and his chipper, cuts that time down a lot. So thank you, Tom. Since we are all about helping those who have helped us and helping good people get by in this world, we want to do a little plug here for Tom, the guy I've been working for, who owns Stumpy Gone out of Granby, Mass. Tom's a great arborist. He does all sorts of tree removals, tree prunings, whatever you need. Uh, we also have a huge stump grinder. We can get rid of those stumps in your yard if you need. And for at least the sh next foreseeable future, if you call Tom to have work done, this guy might show up to do it, which could be a fun treat. So yeah, if you're in the Western Mass area and you need some work done, highly recommend them. Give them a call. There's a surprising amount of material that comes off a tree such as this one, and we can't make use of all of it just as it is. But we'll use the chips.
eventually. I think it's time to go dump the dump truck. Not the most exciting part of the day, but at some point you have to get rid of the chips in order to keep working. Lucky for us, we have a hill that needed some leveling, and this will actually help us out in the winter since we have a lot more logging to do. Alright, back to work. What are we doing right now? We are setting up a shackle at the bottom of the tree so that we can put a rope on it and I can top the tree out and you, cameraman, can catch it. Sweet. Yeah. So you just wrap it and the friction holds it? Yeah, basically. The setup, it works a little bit different, but I still pretty much do the same thing. And then you just wrap it back around itself. Up and run through there, up to me. And then you'll catch it. Cool. Be plenty strong to hold it. Not a big top, so. So normally we could just drop this thing, but there's some potential issues with that, right? Yeah, I mean, we could just drop it but if it goes a little bit the wrong way we could hit the driveway and it's heavy enough flare it could really punch a hole in it the limbs chances of that are pretty slim but the top's heavy enough and there's like the really rare chance that it lands perfectly and kind of just like springboards itself into the road which also wouldn't really be ideal so we'll have Alex catch it or at the very least even if it's a little too much you know, you can just let go of the rope and it'll have helped it like get in line with the tree and provide some resistance to it going all willy nilly. But I'll probably knock out a few more limbs up there and I might even move my anchor point a bit higher and we'll drop it in a couple sections, but should be able to make them light enough that you can catch them without a problem. Cool. Okie dokie. All right, you ready YouTube? We're going on an adventure. I am going to take you with me as we go to remove the top of this tree which means we are going up there doesn't that look like fun Climbing comes in very handy. Being mildly insane also comes in handy. Now it becomes more efficient to actually climb. I really wonder what the neighbors think. 
They seem supportive, but they probably think we're insane. Oops. What? <laughs> All right. That's 50. Cool, all right, so just below the ribbon then. Perfect. Okay, I'll just cut a little below that. Here comes the end. So we are 50 feet. Higher than the house. That's for dang sure. Yeah, there's probably another 20 feet of tree above us, so 70 footer maybe? Not bad for a front yard grown eastern spruce. And that's where the gopher decided it was full, of course.
Okay, pull it pretty tight. All right, now for the fun part. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, just drop all this gear and I'm just gonna send the next pieces down in like little chunks. So you can get all that rope untied and get it out of there. Whew. I've topped them before, but I've never topped them and had them caught. That was a different experience. Rope. Giant shackle. That would have hurt. Yeah. Woo! -hoo. Thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna move all this rigging down. It's amazing the uh, the branches on a tree help stabilize it so much. It gets just like so bouncy as soon as you take the top off. You really wouldn't think so, but man, it's incredible. Well, that was interesting. We took down a couple more chunks before getting to the 50 foot mark. And then Steve cleaned the trunk on the way down. Steve just went to bring the um, dump truck and the chipper back to Tom's. My job right now is to figure out where we're going to drop this pole. We don't have any options. I'll show you what we're talking about here. So here's the base of the tree. We basically have just a couple options. We can either send it out this way along the road, maybe use these as a guide and hope we don't crush this crab apple tree and definitely miss the house or and basically send it out towards my car, take out that right side of the fence, and maybe hope we don't hit the pole or the garage. We can head in that direction and hope we don't hit the garage or the boat, or the safest, but we'd have to take down Victoria's line and we could send her out this way. So let's see where the 50 foot line lines up. In the end, it wasn't a hard choice to make. Dropping parallel to the road was the best choice. So we set everything up, we padded the driveway, we set up a rope as a directional, and we got ready to drop this massive pole. Break anything, we didn't kill anybody. Nice. Well done, dude. How about one more time? I mean, look at that shock wave. Well, 
now that the spruce is on the ground I can't really leave it laying here so I brought down Tom's tractor thank you again Tom and uh, we're gonna see if we can spin this puppy around and get it up on some blocks next to, next to Victoria and then we can start to let it dry and see how it goes yeah not really sure quite how we're gonna do this or how this is all gonna work out we're just gonna kind of start poking and pushing it with the tractor and see what we can do. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, we really appreciate the support. We have an idea that we'd like to pitch to you. We want to put videos out every week, but doing long videos is a little too time consuming. So we had an idea. We're thinking about doing a Q&A section on the Fridays between the long videos and including you. So our idea is, if you want to send us a question via video format, we'll include you in the video and we'll answer that question. So there'll be something for you guys to watch every week. Let us know what you think. You can send us an email. It's going to be in the description right below. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to it. Thanks. Hope you're having a happy holidays and ramping up for a great new year.